Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? Here on Behind the Star, we share stories about the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Central Florida's largest law enforcement agency. From forensics to dispatch to the deputies on patrol, we'll talk to the brave men and women who protect our community. This is Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Star. My name is John Bustecker, the host of Behind the Star. I am also the official storyteller here at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And uh, before I introduce our guest, I want to thank everybody for listening to Behind the Star. I also want to remind everybody that if you've missed any previous episodes, you can get them on Apple Podcasts and Google Play and uh, anywhere you get your favorite podcast, you can find Behind the Star. Also, I would encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram. Instagram and Twitter and uh, Facebook. I mean, we are in the 21st century here at the Sheriff's Office. So if you can follow us there because we have all kinds of great content that we put up in videos and in pictures and stories. And uh, actually, we put up a story today about one of our newest comfort dogs that we have here at the sheriff's office so go check that out but thanks for everybody who listens and so uh, as I said I'm, I'm very excited to have our guest on this week we have master deputy Stanley Murray who is the coordinator of the chaplains here at the Orange County Sheriff's Office welcome to behind the star welcome I'm excited to be here thank you for having we're me. excited to have you I think this is going to be a unique conversation because I'm not sure everybody knows that we have a chaplain and and I'm not even sure everybody knows what chaplains do so that's why you're here to, to talk about that so so why don't you start off by telling us what exactly do you do as chaplain coordinator here at the sheriff's office well we are have the blessed opportunity uh we have about 23 uh, uh volunteer chaplains and they're from various religions uh very bare backgrounds denominations etc and most of the time we utilize them to be a sounding board not just for our employees but their families and even the community upon request they can uh, venture out to any event or any situation and be available to be utilized and uh, I'll go into one place um, post that just occurred our chaplains volunteered over 500 hours within about a seven to ten day period they wow. were out and they were part of all the um, victim notifications to the surviving families they were there as sounding boards uh, and their various uh, opportunities that they've been utilized in so at, at the most basic level what does a chaplain do or what's the role of a chaplain uh, for a public agency like like the sheriff's office well we're, we're very very unique um we're we're a part of not just uh, doing opening prayers or benedictions or closing prayers at different it's ceremonies but even ex people who retire I ask our chaplains to go and just be a part of that retirement to let them know they have been appreciated in so many different ways. Uh, they'll do ride-alongs with the deputies or our civilian uh, service officers and just go about finding ways to encourage them in whatever they're doing. They're not so much going out, quote-unquote, pushing any form of religion on them. They're just there as a sounding board. If one of them feels like they want to speak or talk about their life or things that's going on with them, uh, just trying to help them with any stressors that may be uh, you know, coming up upon employees. This oh, is a stressful job. It, it's sure it's a stressful job and that's why we have a comfort dog as well but I, I'm sure I'm sure the chaplains have a, a, a role in that where they can help maybe make it not so stressful and, and you had said it's not necessarily a religious thing although it can be correct mm -hmm. yeah it can be uh, all of them are trained to know that uh, I have a few that are also part of our, our critical incident stress management team they went certified in that a few have been certified by the state attorney general's office as victim services practitioners uh, a few of them are part of the floor Order, um, crisis response team all of that's just to give them all the things they need to just be able to just listen and respond wherever they can and refer wherever they can as well so we'll get into how you become a chaplain but I want to ask you how did you end up Stanley Murray how did you end up here at the Orange County Sheriff's Office well, I started here back in 1995. I, I think I applied two or three times. Really? <laughs> they well. didn't want you the first year. Uh, I, I guess time. not. <laughs> <laughs> but everything has a time and a season. And when I finally got on, I went through the, I was the last graduating class from the academy over at Mid-Florida Tech. I was also class president uh, of that class that graduated. And, and I've just been rolling ever since. I did patrol out of our Sector 1 Pine Hills and Apopka area. I started a mentoring program my first year as a deputy that, it, that went on for about 18 years. And I responded around the community with that. And I was also in the military. I ended up retiring in 2008 uh, in the reserves as well. So it's been a great opportunity for me. 
So, Stanley, why exactly did you want to become a deputy? Well, you know, when I came out of the service, actually out of Norfolk, Virginia, uh, I moved back home, which was in North Florida, a little bit Were outside Were you in the Navy or the Air Force? I was in the Navy. Okay. I was in Norfolk, Virginia there, and I uh, had done a few uh, Persian Gulf cruises on the ship, et cetera. So when I came home, I actually tried to apply for Norfolk Police Department when I was there, but it took so long. So eventually I came back home up to North Florida, and I uh, – Saw some things there, and just I had been around the world so much, I'd seen so much, I just felt like it was a little bit too slow. I, up I knew, in North Florida, yeah, yeah, yeah a little yeah. slow. A little up there. slower. Some people like it. You know, it. the incomes didn't sound the same. <laughs> you know, so I, I I heard about Orlando. I had a, a classmate that, that that lived here, and they said, "Hey, come on down and check it out." In thirty days, I had an apartment, and I was already doing my thing here. And I brought my wife here, and we just started enjoying life, and been here ever since. So why? But why did you want to be a deputy? You just wanted to continue well, serving. I, I still wanted to serve. I, I I was already doing some form of security uh, in the reserves, uh, security police, and then I also was you know picking security jobs here I, I actually got my job it's ironic how it happened the last time before I had, I had you know not been accepted I was working at Florida Mall a incident happened where a, a guy ran off uh, with a lady in his car and the car flipped I ran two miles to where the car was wow and uh, there was a baby under the lady and I helped save the baby and with that being said, I think that helped me a little bit more in saying this guy really wants to be a police yeah, officer. Yeah, yeah, that, that was and, probably uh, a good interview yes, question sir. that you got to answer. I, and I was able to, to finally get my, my dream fulfilled, and I just loved it ever since. And uh, I've done everything I could at the best of excellence. I try. Do you keep up with the with the baby? Have you ever met? Never really found out where they were from, who they were with. You know, I never got a chance to figure that out. But I pray that that child uh, recovered from that and is doing something great. So when you started, I assume you were on the road like most deputies. Yes, sir. I started on patrol, sector one. This is Pine Hills, Lee Road, Edgewater area, Popka area. Started out down there. And uh, back then we had the square LTD cars. We didn't have the oh, fine cars we have now. Uh, we hand wrote everything. <laughs> <laughs> right? There was no such thing as a computer back then. You know, you were the walking computer. And the FTO process, they actually moved you all over the county. You never did just one area of town. They moved you all over throughout the whole process process of field training so when you were when you were originally a deputy you're still a deputy but when you were when you first started out were you a chaplain then as well or is this no, something you became? I, I i became a part of it kind of just filtering in uh, I'm, I'm also a um a pastor ordained pastor here in orlando and when i was a young minister uh back probably about 10 15 years ago um I kind of got an interest in the chaplain's program. I saw what they were doing, and I kind of, you know, did behind the scenes helping here and there. They had a coordinator, didn't, didn't really need me to coordinate anything, but whatever I could attend or be a part of, I was. And uh, at the time, uh, Sheriff Demons, when he first came in, and the young man that was leaving was retiring. And uh, it gave me an offer. Hey, would you like to look at uh, handing it up? And I said, sure. <laughs> and that's where I've been. So were you a deputy first and then you became an ordained minister? Yes, I was a deputy first. Came right out of, like I said, I came right out of Virginia and uh, from home in North Florida. And so eventually I fell into the ministry part. My mother told me when I was a young age, 13 years old, you're going to be a pastor or a preacher one day. And I was like, nah, you got the wrong son. <laughs> I think you're talking about the other one. Uh, but eventually it, it just fell into place. And I've always had a, an ability, uh, a God-given given ability to be able to speak and and just uh, fit in anywhere you know yeah. some people they only fit in in certain circles I can go just about anywhere and fit in real good and that's part of being a pastor is being all things to all people so what what led to that decision was it just something that you, you felt uh, you know calling, I or? had I had uh some would say some some uh some incidents that brought me to that uh back in 86 I actually got shot I was in Virginia I got a bullet right now a quarter wow. inch from my spine and uh God told me back then, I have need of you. And I kind of heard him, but I didn't, oh, I heard him, but I wasn't listening. And then in 2000, I had two major car wrecks on duty. Uh, that uh, one kind of left me what they call a moderate brain injury. Uh, and I had to learn how to write checks again and things like that and wow. walk again and run again. And uh, uh, with all that being said, and, and then within the next six months, I got in another car accident. And all, th all three times, God whispered to me saying, I have need of you. And then before I knew it, I just walked into ministry and I haven't looked back since. So did you go to school locally or is it like an online thing? No, I went to uh, International Seminary, which is right here out of uh, Tangerine, actually. Zellwood area over there is an international seminary school. Went there, got my degree in uh, theology and uh, continued to process in it. Uh, went and sought uh, up under a path and a leader learn how to operate with God's people and do things God's way and uh, right around 2011 uh, uh, I started out and we, me and my wife we launched a ministry 
I'm going to get to that. I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in that as well. So, so did you ever think that you would leave being a deputy and go be a full time pastor? Well, I tell people now when they ask me, uh, "Do you want to leave and be full time?" I said, "Well, that would be nice because now I'm overtime. Ah, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm doing both. I am a full time pastor right now. In this instance, they call me all day. They check on me. They they ask me. I preach every Sunday. I have Bible study every Wednesday. You know, I I've been best to progress now with leaders who can help with a lot of that but i'm a full-time pastor of our church so, where's your church at uh we're at 2986 silver star road right next to frito-lay uh we're oh, right okay right yeah. we get, just just a little bit west of john young parkway we've been there about six years and uh we got a congregation right around about 200 so wow. we're busy yeah Very busy. i can imagine Very do you live church. over that way or no i actually live far east i'm i'm about i'm on that Going toward Coco side. <laughs> oh wow! So why? How did you end up there? Just a, it was a space loved it, loved the area, um, loved the house that we saw. It, it fit, you know, what we wanted to have, and I enjoy it. So going back to your job here at the sheriff's office as chaplain coordinator, what does that mean? What exactly do you do? Well, my job is to make sure that our chaplains are uh, effective when they're going out. They're not just um, kind of standing around. Um, Maybe they're there, but not really being able to be valued. So uh, we train them in being able to handle the stress situations. <clears throat> I uh, I don't just have, we have different meetings, different parts of the county. They need to know where every substation is to be able to respond to those. Uh, we've had them in the past take some training even at the range, not to go shoot, but that we did scenarios where they actually learned how to pull a deputy's gun out of his holster, maybe handed to him to finish a fight. Things like that that they may be doing because they're in a ride along and yeah. being able to be performing what they need to perform in. So uh, we took them to the morgue uh, down at the Orange County morgue so they understand the process of why and they can explain to their congregants why they may not be able to go see a view of body or things like that, even though they may be religious attachments to it because that happens a lot. So, so are all the chaplains here at the sheriff's office? Are they all deputies? Or are they retired? No, or? no, none of none of our cha all of our chaplains are civilians. Oh, okay. Uh, they're all volunteers. They don't get any kind of form of payment mm -hmm. in, the, in the in the mode of currency. Mm -hmm. uh, that we all have the belief we'll get it one day in heaven, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but they all are very they're very graduate. Uh, my youngest chaplain's probably ten years in. Uh, they all have been around 10, 15, 20. I even have one that's almost 30 years in of doing this job. And they're very proficient. They love what they're doing. Uh, they're, they work in various aspirations of religions with anyone that needs them. And those who may not have a religion, they still are a part of whatever they can do to help them with their stress level. And I'm going to ask you some questions about that. But I'm curious. So so when, when do you send out a chaplain? Like, give me some examples of when a chaplain would be needed for a, for a deputy or somebody that yeah. works here at the sheriff's well, office. Well, I, I take it from the lowest level all the way to the top. Of course, of course, it's easy to send them out to, you know, deputy shootings or deputy involved incidents or community involved incidents, um, uh, mass shootings or anything like that. They, they could be made available if need be uh, they will report to the command command station if they're needed to go out or be a part of anything they would be utilized but I use them even in the smallest forms as I said earlier if someone's re retiring from right here in the classroom and they're going to have a, a nice little setup I send a chaplain in there to just go and congratulate them and thank them for all the work they've done this can become a thankless job over time we all know that and any job can but yeah. especially in the police world you do so much in the community you could be missing out here at locally at home so they uh, they also respond at community events uh, they may have out some churches or businesses may have some community events and they will go out and respond and stand around and, and help wherever they can, connect with people, remind them that they're loved, remind them that they're cared about. And, that, and, and so that's my next question. Let's say let's say there was a shooting, whether it's a deputy involved shooting or, or a deputy is is shot or maybe somebody in the community is. What's the role of the chaplain? So they get the, obviously they, they're dispatched there. They mm -hmm. get there. What do they do first? Well, the first thing they're doing is they're praying all the way there. Mm -hmm. They're just asking for God to, to move his hand upon what's going on. And then when they report there, they're just letting that <clears throat> that supervisor know I'm here and I'm present. They may not have an initial duty because things are maybe a little bit chaotic. They're waiting on it to get organized, but they're letting them know if I am needed, I'm standing right here in position to whatever you may need. Now, they may see other deputies from the squad who are affected. They may go over and just relate with them and talk with them. Like I said, once again, not to know quote unquote push any type of religion on them but just let them know that they're thought about it and they appreciate it uh, I'll send they may go to the comm center as well especially if a deputy involved shooting because if that uh, dispatcher was a part of that 
they are effective. Yeah, and that's something people don't <coughs> think about a lot a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, when you see it on the news and there's there's a shooting or some sort of incident, it doesn't have to be a shooting. You usually see video of, of a, the deputies there, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes that you just never see. And and one of them, like you said, is the dispatch and and, and the comm center. You know, they may have heard the entire incident play out either right. on a radio or right. on a phone and and you're right it, it's a it's a nice thing that yeah. we can send somebody and, and out to there. be there and not be able to physically do anything it's yeah. very it's very stressful on them uh and they periodically go there to the comm center just throughout the months anyway they're on call uh, we have two two rotations uh about 20 uh 12 uh people pl- uh, each each uh, rotation <clears throat> and they go out and they venture to though they'll go over to supply and check on the people back there they'll go over to fleet See how they're doing over there. You know, they'll, they'll go up to the comm center. They'll go to the substations. Any place that we operate in or, or have a consistent relationship with, they'll try to go by and just see, how are you doing? How's your day going? How's your family? You know, yeah. what are your aspirations? You know, how's school going? Some people may be in college or whatever they may be doing. You know, how was your baby's birthday? You know, how was it, you know, whatever, bar mitzvah, whatever they may have, they, they reach out and they touch base. I, th- I think it's an awesome opportunity to have what we have when it comes to our chaplain's unit. Can you tell that somebody's a chaplain? Are they wearing something special? Uh, yeah, they're in the volunteer uh, gray shirt with the green pants. Uh, they do wear that. Uh, they do have the, the second year, they have the six point star that doesn't think they're volunteerism and you can definitely see them when they're coming. So, so let's Let's say I want to be a chaplain. What's the process? What do I got to do? Do I got to go to school for it? Do I just volunteer? Do I sign up? How does it work? Well, I mean, our process is, is you know, it's simple and, and, and pretty much like anyone else's uh, in police. Uh, they don't have to have any police experience. <clears throat> uh, they don't even necessarily have to have a quote unquote master of divinity or anything like that. However, we do ask that they be an ordained leader in whatever religion that they're coming from. Uh, and they have to be attached to a place of worship. Okay. Uh, we don't generally take people who are kind of, you know, doing their own thing, not saying you can't. It's that the sheriff wants to have uh, uh, a connection with a place as well. We, who knows? We may need to utilize you or, or something, and we like to have someone who can say, this person is in good standing. But is there, like, an interview process? Or? There's an interview process. I usually meet them for lunch or breakfast or whatever, and I'll sit down with them. i just ask them, you know. What would you ask? Yeah, yeah. What, would, what do you ask? And I'll ask them, what, you know, what are your aspirations? Why would you want to be a chaplain? And why? sheriff's office you know and they would give me I've, I've heard various things i like what you guys are doing i've heard you guys do great things or they may have a uh, a deputy or a civilian that goes to their place of worship and they've told them about it you do a great job you need to go talk about our challenge program and so they call really out of interest at first because a lot of them don't know exactly what's the requirement or how much it's going to take of their time because religious leaders are very busy i, I can attest to that personally <laughs> But but I, I try to let them know that we, we, we do our best to work with you in your insights of what you have. Some some leaders are doing a lot of mission work. So we just try to find out if it's going to be uh, beneficial for both of us. We don't want to put you in a position that you're going to feel like, I really can't do this, and I don't want anybody overwhelmed with it. Is there a set amount of time that each – chaplain has to do a month is it five hours 10 hours or is it just sort of we don't have a requirement hours of so to speak but we are asking why you're on call to fulfill some of the duties and that means venturing out self-initiated activity visiting these places going to those places if you are called upon being prepared to go out and respond and we're asking that that to make sure that no one's kind of just lingering in the back got an id got a proxy card got a uniform but you're never really here we really want you to kind of be engaged and at any time we tell them if you feel that you've reached your plateau you've you reached as far as you can come, come in, sit down, let me know. And, you know, I'll let you go out with a bang. We'll do an award ceremony. We'll make sure everybody knows just how beneficial you are and were to us. So, so how many, how many chaplains do we have right now? Uh, we're right around 21, 20, 22, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we ever, are we looking for more? Is we're that- always looking for more chaplains, I, especially in different, various different religions. Uh, the majority of them are around the Christian faith directly, uh, denominationally with our, uh, but I always am looking for more rabbis. I need more Islamic imams, uh, anyone in, in, in different, various different faiths, I'm always looking for them. And I think that's that might be a misconception. I think when you hear the word chaplain, you might think, oh, they're always going to be of the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. But but like you said, do, do we have do we have Jewish leaders and Muslim leaders? We as do, well? we do as well. And I'm also kind of considered our community clergy liaison. I I've touched base with all the various different religions. I go to their functions. I go to their services. I go to their dinners. I go to their breakfasts. <laughs> I go to their lunches. You must be a full man. Oh, I feel like God. I feel like you get I, fed. It sounds I'd say, like I tell you, I bounce around. We had Ramadan here a little while back and I, I must have went to 
at least five to ten iftars, and those are those night yeah. services. They You're not have supposed to eat during the day. Yeah, and so they're eating <laughs> at night, and I'm going, oh wow! But the food is so good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I've had a great opportunity, and I'm I'm just thankful for it in every way. So so what would be let's say let's say you sent out uh, somebody who's Jewish or, or Muslim, and maybe the people that they're going to talk to aren't that like mm-hmm. like what's the conversation like there? Well, if you're and, maybe a different religion of the person, the right. chaplain that's out. And there. Our, our very best is to try to match up as best we can. Uh, uh, generally, we try to uh, get a little background on what's going on to make sure we can match them up. Because this is a delicate time, depending on what the situation is. Yes. Especially if it's something they're dealing with maybe death or critical situation where the person may not be incapacitated or not, not uh, able to speak for themselves. So we want to make sure we try to match up as best we can. Uh, and, and if it's possible, I will try to send that faith to that person. How do you do that? Do you just know the uh, person? Or? Well, we, we, I, I try to grab the intel. Okay. I try to find out as much as I can from the from that particular. If, if I get a call from Deborah, say, hey, um, this person says they you know they like a chaplain to come over, uh, and I ask them, do they have a, a, a clergy leader? And they may say, well, no, they don't have anything at all. Or the, and I may and I may get them to try to get me to and tell, well, what do they believe in? And if they tell them what they believe in, then I'll try to match it up the best I can. It's it's a little little more easier in your Christian faith because even though you have different denominations, they all kind of center around uh, Jesus Christ. So yeah. it's a little bit easier to work that versus a whole different setup where you're Islam is it's a different thing. And you know, so you try to work it out the best you can. Are there ever instances where maybe a chaplain is sent out and the person who is affected says, you know what, I don't believe any of this stuff. We don't we don't want you here or, mm-hmm. or I don't want you here. Or is it usually like, all right, I'm glad somebody cares. Mm-hmm. I may not believe what this person's saying, but I, at least I appreciate them. Right. Here. And the chaplain's role, they know that the, the 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 religion part of it is not to be no, to be pushed upon anyone they're coming in basically saying hey i'm here from the sheriff's office and i just want to help is there anything i can do for you can i get you some water can can i can i help you find somewhere to sit can i can i get you whatever you might need and that's why i try to get them trained in the victim advocate part of things and and and, then crisis response type of things so that they know that you're a sounding board really if they just want to sit there and talk just let them talk you know and just help along where you can and you know allow them to be able to you know vent and say what they need to say because they're in a traumatic situation what do the chaplains get out of this they enjoy it uh the, the, you know, the opportunity to just be a part of what's going on in the community and and then they also realize that it brings some self-work to them uh, and, and their congregations as well to just proud to be able to say that their leader their spiritual leader is also a part of this great entity uh, of orange county sheriff's office do, do the chaplains ever sort of, uh, the best word I can think of is double dip. Are they chaplains with Orange County Fire Rescue or OPD? Or is it usually mm-hmm. like if you're a chaplain, you're a, you're a sheriff's office chaplain, and they, they have their own chaplains over at the other. Yeah, agency. most of them kind of stick to one place. Because, uh, I mean, the more you add, the more is required. Um, I have one that's uh, here and also uh, Apopka. Uh, but most of them kind of stick to the one. I had one who was here and fire department. Uh, before he moved to Georgia. So uh, most of them kind of stick to the one because it is demanding. And, you know, the more you open yourself up, the more expected and more required. So how long were you a chaplain before you became chaplain coordinator? Uh, well, I, I kind of walked into it um, really not really as a quote-unquote chaplain for the sheriff's office. I kind of just did the behind the scenes, helping here and there, that kind of thing, not really – uh, designating myself as a chaplain, I just was assisting the chaplain coordinator. So because I was a deputy and, and I had uh, faith and I was uh, already a, a minister, uh, it was easier for me to just kind of help along what he wanted me to do versus the actual interaction all the time with the chaplains. And before they knew it, they said, I think you're the man for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Did the other person leave? You're yeah. like, well, you're, you've yeah. been doing this yeah, too. You, so. Yeah, you've been helping them out, so why don't you just take it all on? And when he retired, that's what they did. I, I became the coordinator. How long have you been the coordinator? Uh, eight years. Eight years now. Mm-hmm. Has it grown since you, you've joined? Because I has. know Orange County's grown, the sheriff's yeah. office probably I mean, grown. It, it has grown, and I mean, it's leaps and bounds. And of course, you know, it's like anything else, changes of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I try to, you know, remind them that, you know, if at any time you feel that you are, you know, you've reached your plateau, you've done all you think you can do, and it's kind of affecting how you're able to handle your personal life, you know, we, we, we have an inactive roster. We can move you down to an inactive, and that way the requirement is not as 
so you know so much required for you and uh, and we, we move forward but I'm always looking for new chaplains yeah. what about the deputies what, what's their I don't want to just say deputies but our staff but our deputies yeah. as well what's their response usually when they see the chaplain coming in for whether it's a traumatic situation yeah. or not what, well, what are they well, you know say? it's funny there was a time back when you know uh, I remember being in patrol and, and you come and you come to brief and, and there'd be a chaplain sitting there and they'd be like who's going to take the chaplain Oh, <laughs> yeah, who wants the chaplain? Who wants the chaplain? Uh, I don't want the chaplain. You want the chaplain? Well, ain't nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, you kind of thought that you you had to see the chaplain because there was something wrong with you. And so my chaplains are, are very good at breaking the ice and saying, "Listen, brother, I just want to ride with you and just want to see what God is allowing you to do and be a blessing to you know to the people. And whatever I can do, just let me know. You know, whatever that might be. And I think that's really kind of broken a lot of what's going on and uh, how chaplains are really viewed. And of course, the comm center loves them. Because they go up there and they walk around and they, you know, handshake and hug and talk with them and, and help them through their stressful day. Because a lot of time that can be a hidden hidden gem over there at the comm center. Are there any specific times you can recall where, where your services were really valued? Um, Maybe an incident that happened or? Well, I mean, outside of Pulse, well, I think we were, we were utilized to the max. I mean, um, we do know that was actually a City of Orlando incident. However, our chaplains were, were major players uh, in what was being to be done uh, in regards to uh, talking with victim survivors and talking with um, family members of helping them be consoled and talk to talk to when they were finally told that the family member didn't make it yeah. or the family was in critical situations. And they were they were just awesome to the response to that. And, and, and the, the continuous of what they do now, any type of incident that I that we deem that needs to have just a response, a presence, they don't always have to go with an official duty to act just being in the presence of what's going on, I think, also is important to them. I think you, you had touched on this a little bit about uh, different religions, but even even beyond just different religions, there's different languages, too. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have to have somebody who's maybe Christian or Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever, right. you also might have to have some people that speak different languages. Exactly. Is that the case for the yes, chaplain? Yes, we do. We have ones that, they, of course, they speak English, yeah. <laughs> Spanish, Creole. Uh, I think one of my uh, chaplains speaks like three different languages. Wow. Uh, Keep so, that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm with the growing trend of Orlando. Orlando is a melting Part like I mean we're we're like a little New York to me. I yeah. mean we got everything here. We have an Asian group that's here. There's a, uh, a Serbian or Russian group that's here. I mean there's a lot that's that's that transpires here. So uh, there's there's German people that live here. I mean we're we're just a melting pot. So the more I can grasp and gather, the more I try to utilize. What about afterwards? Let's say something happens, something tragic, and the and the chaplain goes and responds and talks to that person. Do you keep up with people that maybe you have? Uh, talk to or, or, or they benefited from your presence there over the years? Is there, is there a relationship that starts that you say, oh, Stan, like I remember when you were, you know, you helped me out five years ago. Yeah, I mean, they, they build. I, I, I had um, the opportunity to to know Norman Lewis, Deputy Norman Lewis, before he passed. Yeah, we should say he, he passed away in uh, 2016. 16, yeah, yeah the, mm -hmm. the beginning of 2016, yeah. he, he was in a, a motorcycle accident. Uh, after Officer Deborah Clayton was killed, she was shot and killed uh, mm -hmm. at a Walmart near, not too far from here. And she was with OPD, and he was in pursuit, or he was he was on his way to, to help it. out. Right. And he was a, a very lovable guy. This is yes, before I got here at right. the sheriff's office, right. but I know everybody I've talked to. I've met his mother as well, mm -hmm. Norma, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like everybody really, really loved him. Well, he him. was quite the guy, and we had personal conversations uh, regularly. And I mean, he he loved God. He loved his his relationship, with what he did in the community, and he loved what he did as a deputy. He was they called him a gentle giant, but he was definitely was all of that. He was he was one of those kinds of people. So those kind of relationships never really, you know, fade away. I mean, I, after meeting his mom initially, we talk regularly. Uh, sometimes me and my wife will go and, and take her to dinner. We go. She's great. She's yeah, a talker. Say, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, she, and she loves it. And we, we correspond with her regularly. So, you know, relationships can build from different things on very different natures. So I always remind my chaplains how important it is. You know, I'm a firm believer. You don't put people to work with people that don't like people. Yeah. That's just not a good <laughs> that's, concept. That, yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so we always try to have all of our chaplains realize, you know, you have to have that loving spirit. You got to have a love for people. You know, to be prepared for that. So what drives you to keep keep doing what you do? You know, it's just the, the beauty of knowing that um, no matter what's being said and what's being done, I don't necessarily look for the natural results of what happens. I believe I've, if I've done the best I could, then that's success to me. 
That I, I'm going to end it there. I think <laughs> I think that's a that's a good spot to end it. So, uh, uh, Master Deputy Stanley Murray, thanks for all you do here at the Sheriff's Office. And uh, if you're interested in being a chaplain, how, how can people uh, volunteer or get in touch? Yes, with you? please go to our website www.ocso.com. Click on Volunteer Opportunity. Scroll down to the middle there. You'll see Chaplains, Volunteer Chaplains. Click on that. Fill out the pre-screener. I'll get notice of it, and I'll be giving you a call. All right, and if you speak several languages oh we, we could might get a, a faster a call. faster call <laughs> <laughs> all right stanley thank you so much and uh thanks to everybody who uh listened to this week's episode and we'll see you next time thank you for having me thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe to behind the star you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts also follow us on twitter instagram facebook and youtube Until next time, I'm John Bustecker, and this is Behind the Star. Behind the Star.